Right, so we're getting towards the end of this uh, job. Now we have to put the ball and the spring in the cap into here. And also we're going to do the location of the high and low selector in here. It's really, it's already done. We've put a new washer uh, o-ring in here. It's all nice and clean. Bit of silicone around that. And remember to locate this in this groove here. That's how it goes. All right, I'll come back to that when it's finished. So I'll put some thread lock around the screw down here. I hope you can see that. I'm just going to do one little punch on there just to stop it popping up. The next thing I'll do is this piece here. So we'll put some silicone on that. Right, so that piece is on now. Um, I put the wire on here for the electric ground, but uh, it's looking a bit shonky, so I might just do that one again. But the thing is I've got to do now, because it's Friday afternoon and I've really got to get a wriggle on, put these bearings into this uh, inter intermediate gear, and we're going to go down and see JP, because he needs to make a bush for us. Well, turn down the bush. So, there's our bearing. Now you can't really go wrong with these. The one thing I was thinking about last night, that the earlier ones, they had a, a circlip in the bottom of here. Now these remachined ones here, it's just got a step, so you can't go wrong pushing that bearing in. If you push too hard on the circlip one, you can actually bend it and push it too far in. So just be aware of that. So let me get those pushed in. Right, with the bearings pressed in, we're going to assemble this piece bearing on and we're going to use some solid uh, tubes on this job. Now I already have one here that's already been machined and we thought it was a bit short but we're going to put this one in first, this solid tube. We don't use the collapsible one that's supplied with the kit, we found out they were very awful. <laughs> They're, um, they collapse uneven so they go in the bin. Now we're going to go across to our vise and put it into our tool here. And we've got a nut. We've got to put that on. Here. Line it all up. So we'll set our torque wrench to 80 newton meters. And 80 newton meters. There we go. So what does that feel like? Just a bit of play on that. So could we get away with this short one? Because it's supposed to be one newton metre of torque on that, but I, I do it all by feel now. So let's take this off, swap over the tube, and see if that short one will do the job. It might be too tight. Ah, you see? I haven't got it tightened up to 80 newton metres, and that's tight. So the short one's out. We'll have to put the get the longer one and just cut it down a bit and just out of interest I'll, uh, well, I'll show you what the measurement is but that was that was far too tight. Now this short one when it was tight was 58.61 and this one here is 59 dead on. So we're, we're not talking very much at all just we have to just plane this down a little bit but what JP will do in his sh shop we put a dial gauge on here but, 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 just to get it you know take off all the play and then we take about a thousandth of an inch off and you just get that nice feel you don't want it too tight but you don't want it waffling about and waffling on and things like that so let's put that bush in there put the bearing on here we're going to wash all these lot out once we're finished naturally because there's a lot of manhandling on this but uh, it seems to work out all right so we'll put that into there and then we'll go and see the good man so this is the next day i got back from jp's shop and he got the tube that was 59 millimeters and he initially pulled off seven thousandths of an inch why in inches <laughs> because his lathe set up for that so uh, we put it in and it we just needed a little bit more so he took up another half a thousandth of an inch 
and it was perfect. It's you can't spin it with your finger, but it's not like wrapping it around tight. It's just just nice. These solid bushes are really good. But like I say, we make our own. If you were to buy these from Land Rover, and they are incremental, starting at 58.35 millimeters, uh, and there's a whole range of them. The 21 pound kind of expensive to get a load of them and find out they're not right so we make them at 59 and you just turn them down to suit so what we'll do out of sort of shits and giggles we'll take this off before we you know, we've got to take it off to fit it but what we're going to do is measure it up and see actually what it ended up at in millimeters and it ended up at 58.84 and it was 59, not much. So it's only just a light shaving off that and that'll be set up right. But gone are the days <clears throat> messing about with bloody string and all that type of stuff and trying to do that crush sleeve. It's too complicated. Uh, like I say, we make these bushes up. I mean, would I sell them? You can get that tube just about anywhere. It's, uh, I think it's inch, inch tube because JP told me about it. Um, inch and a quarter outside and one inch inside there you go go down to your local shop oh no you're in uh, metric you'll have to work that out for yourself so now what we're going to do is on to the final stage on the home run we'll turn this box around put the bushing in set it all up put the intermediate shaft in and then torque it down just before we fit the intermediate gears We've got this assembly, the ATB assembly, um, just on its own without any other gears. And this is what it sounds like. There's no knocking, there's just a little bit from the looseness of the, uh, the gear, but that's about it. I mean, uh, oh, it could be the nuts. Yeah, it's the little nuts hanging around at the top. So really, really quiet, nice and solid. And to test it, you need to put a... Uh, a bar underneath to hold that flange and a hat like this flange and a bar to turn this one. I can't do both at the same time but it does actually work. So now we're going to fit this. We've oiled the bearings up lightly. Dismantling tool invaluable and use it to slide the assembly in on top of the bush and then you don't need all them bits of wire and bits and pieces and string and stuff like that and that's easy available in the shop by the way for now so we'll line that up and get some oh turn me turn my uh, caliper off get some oil on this shaft we've already got the uh, the shaft polished off here take that sharp edge off we mentioned that before but maybe you can see it a little bit better here oil it up Oil the o-ring, uh, oil the o-ring underneath. Now this can be tricky because sometimes you might have to take this bolt out, I'm not really sure. Yeah, I think it, oh. nope. Now, we've got to get that right way around because it always helps. Now, to get it the right way around, the key is so that's the key that locks it in and that is at the top so that means the flat goes to the top and the little keyway goes to the bottom do it like that and it'll save you a lot of time i forgot about this been a since i've done it and that should line up with no bother at all should it in once. There we go. And all we need to do now is just tap it down. All right. And that's it. There you go. All nice and flush. Like I say, I'm going to put the oil uh, the oil seal in here later. Um, then we'll take this off the bench and tighten up that nut. Now, yesterday. I was all of a panic looking for this bottom cover. Couldn't find it anywhere. 
Then I realised it hasn't got a bottom cover in it. Well, <laughs> well it has, it's got one of these, these are extended sumps. Now the problem with this is I'm not going to fit this now because it, it interferes with this plate I put on to put the gearbox, the, the transfer boxes back onto my lift. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a temporary flat plate with a gasket on. Now this is where the gaskets come in handy with the Ashcroft kit. I'm just going to grease the gasket and then I'm going to bolt it down because we're going to test it. So because I want to fill it full of uh, a light oil to wash it out, make sure everything's fine. We'll leave it for a few hours and then we can drain it and put the proper oil in. Because like I say, even though we've been messing about, we get gritty bits on our hands and stuff like that. It just can't be avoided when you've got oil. So I just, when it's on the test bench, I just like to wash them out, leave them to drain before we put the proper oil in. And then we can see if there's any leaks or anything like that. Right, we're on the last leg now. I put a new wire on this uh, diff lock warning light. Now, we're going to tighten up the nut to 88 newton meters at the back. This might be tricky. Is this still on? Yeah. I think I'll do it pulling rather than pushing. There we go. And that feels really nice. That feels really nice. That's in low range. Wait a minute. What's going on? There, there, yeah, that's high range. And that's high range. And the only clunk you hear is that little bit between the teeth and the uh, drive dock. I'll show you. This is what I was trying to explain. The noise you'll hear is this. There's nothing you can do about that because if it was very tight it would, it would be difficult to get into gear. So that's all you're hearing. Not too bad, eh? Oops. Just a little bit more. Go off. These are very thick walls on here so it makes it a bit difficult. Now I haven't fastened up the, the filler bung because I'm going to fill it with oil later. But that's about it, that's all there is to it. It's going to be a nice box. So the next thing is we get it on the test bench and uh, I'm trying to put, I'm trying to put a nut that's just fallen off. We'll get it on the test bench and see what it's like. Well, I've got my uh, flange holding tool on here and I've just got a bar on here and that's the resistance you get. All right, you get a bit of resistance. Now, if you put it into diff lock, thus, there, that's in diff lock. It's locked solid. Now, I just was having a bit of a play with this because I was kind of worried and I thought it's not going to go in. But when you take it out of diff lock, this really has to be uh, spinning a bit in order for it to come out because if not. The diff lock doesn't come out easy. I mean, it's easier when it's on the car and when it's on the vehicle, or should I say that, um, and on the road. But what I did was I just rattled up the front a bit like that, give it a bit of vibration. It went all good. And let's see if we can hold this. Oh, I wish they did these flanges equally <laughs> instead of messing about. And there you go, see it's coming. No worries, everything's working fine. So uh, please about that. So that's in diff lock out. And with the ATB, it's very rare that you'll need the diff lock in.